Number nine, what is the what is the interest rate? Uh, and number 10, how do I get the best interest rate and have a bonus question? And I, I laughed at the number nine because that's the question I get a lot. Like someone calls me, like they find me on Google or Yelp or whatever, like online. And that's the first question, what, what is your interest rate? And I'm like, that's like the stupidest question you could ask. But I don't say that to them, obviously, but that's what I'm thinking, right? It you gotta make a move. Real talk, my honest thoughts as a loan officer. This is a presentation I've done, and it's a video that I've done on YouTube. All right, so uh, top 10 questions uh, asked by home buyers. Number one, what do I need to qualify? Number two, do I really need to be pre-approved? <sighs> Number three, what is the first of getting pre-approved? Four, who do I need to talk to first loan officer? And it should be real estate agent. Number five, how do I know how much I can afford? Number six, how much money do I need in order to buy a house? Number seven, what loan programs are available? Number eight, how do I get 0% down? Number nine, what is the... What is the interest rate? Uh, and number 10, how do I get the best interest rate and have a bonus question? And I, I laughed at the number nine because that's the question I get a lot. Like someone calls me, like they find me on Google or Yelp or whatever, like online. And that's the first question, like, what, what is your interest rate? And I'm like, that's like the stupidest question you could ask. But I don't say that to them, obviously, but that's what I'm thinking, right? And just so you know, if if, if I do talk a, to a client or a referral that you send me, I, I, I'm not going to I'm not going to treat them bad, right? I'm going to give them my all, you know, and I'm going to make them feel good and all that good stuff. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to uh, educate people who might not work with me or people who are just thinking about buying a house and at least get them a chance to learn the hard way or the honest, blunt way what it takes to buy a house. But the people who are already talking to me, uh, I'm going to, of course, give them, you know, great customer service if possible. Uh, I'll never call them stupid or anything like that. But you, I'm going to call stupid because you haven't even decided to hire me yet. Okay. All right. So number one, what do I need to qualify? Really, you need income, assets, and credit. And I think that should be common sense, right? Income because we need to know that you can pay back the mortgage. Assets because you got to pay for stuff as in like down payment and such. And credit because we need to know that you, you have a history of, of good payment. And I have a lot a long list of things here. Um, I can actually share the PDFs if you guys or the, the, the guideline. Uh, or the infographics later on, because uh, I'm not going to get too deep on it, but I'm going to be pretty general. But basic income is like a job, self-employment, maybe you own a business, maybe you're getting some sort of retirement, uh, alimony accounts, uh, child support, asset depletion, that's kind of an interesting thing. That's where like you have a, a, a huge uh, nest egg of, of funds, and you could actually draw income from there, and that can actually qualify you, uh, and there's other additional income. Uh, when it comes to assets, it has to be sourceable, meaning you have to be able to trace it. So cash is not good. Uh, so gift funds, that means someone's gifting you the money. We can't borrow money. Well, actually, there's certain cases where you can borrow money. But in real reality, uh, gift funds are people that are donating money to you. Uh, 401k, meaning like a retirement savings that you might have. A lot of people don't know that they can use a 401k to put down payments. In fact, they encourage it. Um, and, uh, you know, of course, money in the bank, right? Uh, credit scores. Uh, it's really different who you talk to. Uh, you can uh, go as down as, as low as a 500 credit score with 10% down using FHA. Uh, my bank or my lender can do that, but I I don't celebrate that. I don't advertise that, you know. But if someone comes with below 580 credit score, but they have more than 10% down, there's a chance we can help them. But it's really a case by case basis. But really, we started at 580 for FHA uh, and 620 for conventional. But again, with the 620, you're probably more likely going to be an FHA person because you'll be a stronger FHA and be a really weak conventional. And you have to be really perfect on every other level to really qualify at a 620 with conventional. So that's why 640 is kind of like the rule of thumb for most banks. Uh, but again, I can at least from my experience, I can help people at a 580 and even get you conversion 20. Okay. And, you know, depending on what program you're going for, it all makes a difference. Okay. But so that's why I put best check, best to check with your local lender. Okay. Do I really need to be pre-approved? Uh, you know, there is a time that maybe you can get away with it and not being pre-approved, but honestly in this market, and I'm pretty sure most of you real estate agents would agree. Uh, you're not looking, you're not, you're not looking at an offer if, it's, if the person not pre-approved. If you're a listing agent, and if you are a buyer's agent, you're probably not going to be very excited about sending someone out to look at houses or showing houses if they're not pre-approved. Okay, um, so the answer should be yes. Do I really be pre-approved? Yes. And honestly, it's not just about making sure you qualify. It's about doing your homework and be prepared. Okay. And a lot of my conversations or my my tips are going to be about 
being prepared, knowing what you're doing, and mentally and emotionally and and, and, and physically being ready, and also not rushing. Okay, so being pre-approved, it just means that you did your homework. Okay, uh, so what's a pre-approval? Well, you know, we review your documents, we review your credit. You know, we actually pull your actual future credit uh, using uh, FICO 4, 5, and 2, which is what uh, lenders across the board use. Um, so I don't want to get too deep into this, but basically Fannie and Freddie has a specific type of credit report that they're looking for or uh, information from bureaus. So that's why all lenders use the same scores. Okay, uh, so just because I see a score that you might not like doesn't mean another lender is going to see a different score. No, we all see the same scores. Okay, so shopping lenders just because you don't like the score I gave you doesn't change anything. Okay, um, so uh, we also check for income. You know, WGU pay stubs, 1099s, tax returns. We need a verification of employment in most cases uh, in order to, uh, you know, of course, close a loan. But for pre-approval, we might not need it. But you know, it depends. You know, let's say you have a lot of uh, overtime, a lot of bonus. We don't want to qualify you incorrectly, so we ask for a VOE beforehand. And that's actually a little bit more work beforehand. I'll give you an example. Pre-qualification, you're not going to do a VOE. Pre-qualification is like review it; it looks good. All right, you can go shop. A pre-approval that's with verify with employment is like actually making sure that you qualify 100% based on your income, which is what I actually recommend, right? Um, I actually uh, try to encourage my clients to do uh, what we call uh, is a TBD or to be determined. We actually underwrite you 100% as far as we can uh, without the property, right? So it's almost like the, you know, Whenever you do, a, when you get a contract, you're going to underwrite yourself and you underwrite the house. But we're going to do the underwriting on yourself first before you get a contract because why not, right? And it's going to save time. You can close faster, and there's no surprise at the very last minute, unless of course you change it, right? Uh, assets, uh, bank statements, savings, four hundred one k, like I said earlier, and then we submit you through the underwriting system. Uh, it's called AUS. And it, I call it like a robot god that knows about the mortgage algorithms and what's going to qualify, what's going to not. It's, it reviews like all your credit information and the information that we input, and it tells us what we what they think you can do. And if you have an AE or approved eligible, more than likely you'll be good uh, all the way through. If you get other findings, uh, doesn't mean you don't qualify. It means there might be exceptions that needs to be made, like a manual underwriter or something like that. Okay, but normally we want to get an automated underwriting system to get you pre-approved. Okay. Uh, what is the first step in getting pre-approved? Speak to a loan officer, right? You got to explore your current situation and your goals. Uh, and, and you got to fill out the 1003, the mortgage application, okay? Um, that's the first step. Well, the first step is wanting to do it, you know, and the second step is talking with someone like myself, okay? Uh, and we will lead you through the process. All right, who do I need to talk to first, loan officer or agent? Uh, I always say the loan officer, and I know a lot of you guys might not like that. Uh, most agents might not like that, but... I mean, let's be honest here. You can't do anything with anybody if you don't know if they qualify or not. You don't know what their buying power is. You don't know how much they can buy. You don't know, um, you know, uh, what what price range you should be looking at. You don't know those things, right? So uh, it makes sense to get pre-approved first. Uh, but uh, I would always say there's an exception. If you have a real estate agent that you love, know, and trust, then it makes sense to ask them or talk to them first and ask them for a referral because if they are a real estate agent you know, love, know, and trust, and hopefully they are a good real estate agent, they probably have loan officers that they worked with in the past and they uh, they can depend on them. And, you know, having a working relationship works, you know, makes things a lot easier, okay? Uh, that would be the exception, but really most uh, real estate agents uh, won't show houses if people are not pre-approved and they won't even know how to, uh, you know, show, like, they don't know what house to show you. Of course, I'm not a real estate agent, so I don't know the real estate agent side or real estate side, but I would assume that it would be pretty difficult to know what kind of houses to send someone if you don't know what their buying power is. So that's why I say you need to speak to the loan officer first. But a lot of times they speak to the agent first, okay? And, uh, yeah, I mean, I call I call people, do it, they do it as backwards, right? But that's okay because either way, as long as they get pre-approved, doesn't matter who they talk to first, right? All right, next slide. How do I know how much I can afford? So I always tell people that you need to just talk to a loan officer. It's impossible to try to figure out the math on your own. Now, that's not true. If you are really good and you know all your uh, your, your 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 information, you know, like 
like I have a CPA client who pretty much knows everything about his information. So he did a pretty good job of figuring out, uh, you know, his DTI, whatever. He even knew what his interest rate was when I gave him his payment. So it's like he's that good, right? So but he's a CPA, right? But most people you won't be able to know because we have to look at everything. We have to look at your income. We have to also look at your uh, your debts that are on your credit reports. There might be other debts that are not on your credit report. So there's a lot of information that uh, I call it an algebraic equation. There's a lot of variables that you don't know about that we have to find, right? Uh, but, you know, I'll just give you some uh, general math so you can understand, uh, you know, with uh, conforming loans, that's, you know, like conventional, uh, you're looking at about 30%, 35%. You can, uh, you know, in terms of the max, but you can also go up to 40%. I've actually seen 50%. Uh, when I say compensating factors, things that are in your favor, maybe, uh, you know, you have a strong rental history, uh, a pain, maybe more than what your mortgage. So let's say your mortgage is a thousand and your rental history is 2000. Well, that actually is a pretty good compensating factor. You paid $2,000 a, a month for two years. Uh, maybe you can afford 50% DTI, right? Uh, you know, so that, that, so it really depends. Uh, FHA, uh, is, it actually goes a little bit higher. That's why a lot of people like to go FHA because you can actually get a little bit more buying power. Um, you know, it's about 30% is the general guideline, but you can go up to as high as 55%. And it's funny because most FHA loans always end up being in the 50 plus percent range and conforming or conventional ends up being below 50%. It's almost like, uh, you know, there's there's like a... a, a a buying range that people want to be at <laughs> and uh some people they, they're trying to buy too much and some people they they're just buying whatever fits them right uh so va loans um uh, that's another thing is a little bit different you know as you can see the numbers are all they're all uh you know across the board like kind of bouncing around uh but you know you can go up to 50 percent on va as well usda a uh, usda is really strict okay usda is a rural loan, they're trying to get you to buy a house uh, in the middle of nowhere, and they're encouraging you to do that by offering you 0% down. So, um, you know, the way they look at it, you know, if you're not putting anything down, you might need a little bit of help. Uh, so we're going to help you, but we're not gonna let you like overspend, right? So the, the detail is a little bit strict for USD, okay? Uh, and of course, there's exceptions, you know, in terms of what kind of loan products you're looking at, uh, non-QM as a non-qualified mortgage, and also uh, non payment assistance, okay? Uh, but this is how you wanna do the math. If you wanna do the math, this is how you do it, okay? Uh, you literally look at how much you're paying every single month in terms of uh, reoccurring debt. And when I say reoccurring debt, I'm talking about things like your car notes and your credit cards, and maybe you bought furniture online. I'm not talking about your cell phone bill. Your cell phone bill is not a debt, you can actually Stop using the cell phone and be okay. Well, actually, I guess you might finance the cell phone. I don't know. Uh, but I'm talking about like uh, things that are going to be on your credit report that you must pay back. You know, electricity doesn't really count. You can actually officially stop using electricity and that'll be okay, right? Uh, and then you divide that uh, by your gross monthly income. When I say gross, I'm talking about before taxes, okay? Um, and if you, that's your, your, that's your debt to ratio, but you also have to add the, home as well right like your mortgage payments okay so uh let's say you make a thousand dollars a month and you want a thousand dollar mortgage you're not going to be able to afford that you you won't qualify for that let's say you make a thousand dollars a month and you have a thousand dollars of reincur uh debt there's no room to add a mortgage so that should be pretty simple math right uh, but you know of course uh, if you want to know your true buying power you really need to talk to a loan officer but this is how you can kind of figure out the math yourself okay all right, how do I know uh, how much I can afford? Again, I kind of went over this. Uh, you know, you have to look at your monthly payments, which is including the DTI, which is a long list of things, mortgage payments, property taxes, homeowner insurance, uh, you know, like I said, car payments, uh, you know, maybe personal loans, maybe you owe child support, maybe you're paying alimony, uh, government debt, like you owe money to the IRS. Right? Those things are gonna be added to your DTI. Uh, stuff that's not included, it's gonna be like your car insurance, your cell phone bills, your health insurance costs, groceries and food, entertainment, right so those are not including your DTI. okay uh number six how much money do i need in order to buy a house okay so this one's a little bit deeper um but i'm gonna try to be general about it okay uh most of you guys on the call probably know uh these numbers but a lot of you know i guess civilians i would call them they don't know that uh, you can actually buy a house with as low three percent down using a conventional it's called the home ready home possible i call it a secret uh secret loan because a lot of people don't know about it 
but uh, you can go down three percent. Uh, it depends on your income and where you're buying. Okay, uh, of course you have to qualify for it as well. But you know, a lot of people go three point five percent with FHA because it's a lower down payment than conventional, and FHA is a little bit more flexible in terms of qualifications and DTI. Okay, uh, you can go five percent with conventional, of course. Uh, if you want to avoid mortgage, avoid mortgage insurance, you got to put twenty percent down, meaning you have to have eighty percent uh, loan to value or twenty percent equity. Okay. Uh, and there's other ways to avoid mortgage insurance, but that's just kind of the general mindset when it comes to down payment. Uh, and of course, zero percent down for VA and USDA. VA has in VA loans, and USDA has in the rural loan I talked about. Closing costs, uh, you know, this is a really, really like broad stroking number, two to four thousand dollars, because there's different types of fees. There's prepaid interest, there's uh, underwriting fee, processing fee, mortgage insurance. Um, you know, you got to lock the rate, you know, maybe you're buying a discount, you know, there's things like that. And there's way too much information to share on this call. Uh, but, you know, there's lots of fees to consider. Uh, and you also have to consider uh, third party fees like title search, uh, the appraisal fee, attorney fee that's in Texas, um, credit report fee, wire transfer fee. Uh, you know, if you're going with a VA loan, there's a funding fee. Uh, there's a guarantee fee for the USDA. I mean, there's uh, upfront mortgage insurance premium for FHA. Uh, again, there's way too much information, but there's a lot of costs that you might not think about whenever you are purchasing a home. Um, you know, and there's also prepaids, meaning you have to have uh, money in your escrow account for insurance and uh, prepaid interest and property taxes, right? Um, and these things are expected to be uh, provided at closing, okay? Uh, so not only do you have to have down payment, but you also have to have to pay for closing costs. We also have to have prepaids, right? So there's more to it than just the 3.5% down in the FHA, right? which a lot of people don't understand, right? Um, so I say the general rule of thumb is 10%, okay? 3.5% uh, for the down payment, 2, 2 to 5% for closing costs. And sometimes you need reserves. Reserves is, uh, the best way to describe it is just money in the bank. That's a cushion, okay? Um, so let's say someone uh, qualifies, but they must have uh, a year in reserves. What that means is that they must have 12 months of mortgage payments in the bank after closing. Okay. Uh, so maybe they qualify, but they need a little help to make sure that they uh, can close and be okay. Because the worst thing we can do is, you know, make you so broke that you're eating ramen for the next six months. Okay. So what loan programs are available? Uh, when I when I say non, or when I say typical normal QM loans, I'm talking about qualified mortgage. These are the loans that you probably know about, conventional, FHA, USDA, and VA. The non-QM loans or non-qualified mortgage are the ones that do not conform to Fannie and Freddie guidelines, uh, jumbo loans, bank statement loans, investor cash flow loans, 1099 loans, construction loans, and I-10 loans. Uh, I don't want to get too deep into these, but an investor cash flow loan is an interesting one. Uh, you can actually come buy a house and not have any income. Uh, why? Because you are showing that the home that you're purchasing, which is, of course, an investment property, uh, makes enough income as a rental to cover the mortgage, right? Uh, so that's a non qm loan. You cannot do that with a qualified mortgage. And a person trying to move into the house cannot use that because, of course, obviously, someone's got to pay for the mortgage, which is the people that are renting, right? Uh, so again, best to check with your local lender, but there's a lot of different loan programs available. All right, how do I get 0% down? So when someone asks me this question, of course, uh, you know, more than likely they're not, they're not thinking about the VA loan and they might not know about the USD loan. So it tells me that they don't have money, right? Uh, which of course kind of sort of, uh, I wouldn't say it raises the red flag, but that's when I already know that they're not ready, okay? But I still break down the information because obviously they're coming uh, to me for information. Uh, I'll tell them that, well, if you are a veteran, you can do a, v, you can do a VA loan and they're, you know, they might say, well, I'm not a VA veteran. I'm like, okay, well, then USD, you, you have USDA, <laughs> uh, which will allow you to uh, purchase a property in rural area, uh, but there's income limits and such. And, you know, a lot of people don't want to buy USDA. They want to buy in the city that they're at, right? I go, okay, well, there's down payment system programs, okay? And down payment assistant, uh, down payment assistant programs, they're very unique and uh, more complicated. They will take more time to close, and there's a lot of different types. And I don't get too deep into them, but uh, they they are available. And there's always some sort of catch to it, right? Uh, maybe a higher rate, 
uh, you know, maybe uh, you can't refinance after five years. I mean, there's lots of different uh, ways that people will finance uh, your down payment, but then they have something. Let's put it this way. You're going to pay for it somehow. Right. Uh, and again, there's too much information to share on this call. Uh, but uh, if you want to know about my situation, I do have down payment assistance programs and I can go nationally with it. So just reach out to me if you have questions about that. Okay. Uh, what is the interest rate? Okay. So <laughs> this is the one that kind of makes me laugh. Uh, if someone, like I said, someone calls me and asks me, you know, uh, yeah, I'm, I want to buy, I want to uh, buy a house and, uh, you know, someone recommended you to me or I found you online, whatever. Uh, so I, I want to apply for mortgage, but what's the interest rate? And you know, to me, it's like, okay, well, I can't really answer that question correctly. I can't an answer it honestly. Okay. Because it really depends. It depends on what's going on with you. It depends on how much you're putting down, what your credit scores are, what your income is, what your DTI is going to be. I don't, I have no idea. So, so literally at this point, it's all about selling. I'm going to try to sell you <laughs> to work with me by giving you the lowest interest rate possible with everything being perfect, right? And you know that and the bad part about this is that that's what all loan officers are doing. So they're being fed a lot of bullshit, basically, right? People are being fed a lot of bullshit. Oh, I saw online at bankrate.com and this and this. And this. It's all advertisement. It's all lies, okay? Um, and I put right here, uh, you know, most likely scenario, uh, the quote is inaccurate, <laughs> sometimes uh, purposely quoted lower t with fine print, rate changes daily, multi you know, and when I say rate changes daily, it means what I tell you today is going to be different tomorrow. So why am I telling you today? You don't even have an application. <laughs> I, right, I go, I say it's for marketing purposes, only best rates are advertised. Uh, I compare it to a moving train, it's never the same, right? Uh, Yes, Mike, Michael Hyman says the number to get your phone to ring. Yes, absolutely. Uh, missed quotes are not liable since they can blame market. So what I mean by missed quotes is, and I've actually been, I've actually heard people being trained this. Like they would literally, they would literally be told, if someone asks you what's the best rate, give them the best rate possible. Uh, meaning like, uh, you know, with 800 credit scores, with like 0% DTI, with, you know, 50% down, whatever. you the best. And then that way when they apply <laughs> and the real rate comes out, you can be like, oh, well, the, the you know, the rates were yesterday's rate. The rates changed today, you know, and, and because the market changes every day, you actually have that to sort of fall back on and not be held liable of it, you know. And I've actually heard people <laughs> who would actually quote, incorrectly on purpose because they know they're not going to be liable for it so you're, you're basically asking someone to lie to you right i mean what's the best interest rate well let me give you like the the biggest lie possible because i know if i give you something too high you're not gonna call me back right so obviously it, it's a very loaded question right um but i can quote you you know i, I told people i can quote you if, you if you tell me what your, you think your credit score is how much you're trying to purchase how much you're putting down what your zip code is um whatever but yeah, again people it's not reliable because people are trying to give the best case okay and uh, how do you get an accurate rate quote? Well, you, uh, an accurate rate quote? Well, you got to apply, right? Apply, let me see your application and everything. Uh, the only thing that will be missing is your uh, your your property, which doesn't really affect your rate. I mean, I guess the zip code could. Uh, and then I can give you an accurate rate quote. Now, if you want the actual rate, then we must get a contract. We must get a property. And then we can actually you know, tell you what the actual rate would be at that moment. And then if you want to lock it, you can. Okay. And I go, this is the only way to get to. Okay. When I put this is the only way, this is the only way to get the actual answer, right? The question, what is the, what is the interest rate? The only way to get that is to have a contract and be ready to lock, right? That's the only way you even know. Because again, when I tell you today, it's going to be different tomorrow. I mean, I have a client who's doing a refinance. I've quoted him 10 days in a row and it's been different every freaking day. <laughs> right. And I'm like, what's the point of me telling you? I mean, just, just if you like the rate lock, if you don't like it, then there's no, there's no point, but now rates have gone up. So it, he's upset. And I'm like, well, I mean, I told you, if you like it, you, you lock it. You know, I'm not going to, I can't, I don't have a crystal ball. I can't tell you if the rates will go up and go down. I can only tell you what the rates are at this moment. That's all I can tell you, you know? And uh, so, yeah, I mean, the, the point of me telling you that is that the rates are always different every single day, right? And if you like it, you lock it. If you don't like it, then I guess you can wait and see what happens, right? Uh, but uh, from my perspective, uh, gambling is a dangerous thing, okay? All right, so uh, I don't want to harp on that too much, but, you know, it's a question that people ask that makes me laugh. Okay, so how do I get the best interest rate? <sighs> okay, so you must be willing to do work. Okay, uh, 
you, you can't talk to one person and get the best the best way. It's just like and I, I, I in my video on, on YouTube I compared to buying a car because I used to sell cars. Okay, um, if someone comes to the dealership and says I want the best best price for this car, you know I don't know what that means. Right, so I'm I'm gonna guess. Right, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna give you this much, and that might not be the best price. I might be able to go lower, I might be go higher. I don't know. But if you give me a, a, a quote, like you go, I went to this dealership, and this is the a handwritten quote for this exact car. It's the same car you have. The only difference is that it's in your your lot and not not his lot. Then I have something to work with. Right. So basically, my strategy to help people, and sometimes not even, I mean, I help people actually go to other lenders. You know, like I actually will, will actually tell people how to do this and they'll actually end up going with someone else. And that's okay because at least they got the best situation possible with my help. Okay. So my advice is to have at least two lenders. One of them that you love, maybe it's your local lender, maybe it's your best friend, whatever. And then one of them is the next best choice and go to the next best choice and actually uh, go get pre-approved with them and give them the contract. Okay, so that, that's how far you have to go to get the best rate. You have to actually get a contract, right? Uh, and then you send it to that lender, and the lender has to uh, disclose based on the information you provided. And uh, you can actually ask them to look at the rates and lock the rate. And that rate is now not changeable, so they can't go back on their word. So whenever someone asks you what's the best interest rate, I give you a rate. I can change that anytime I want, right? But if it's locked, it's locked. It's permanent. There's no changing that. So it is what it is at that point. So you go to your second favorite lender, you get them to lock a loan estimate for you, and then you go to your favorite lender, who you should already have a contract with as well, and you go, this is the rate I got from this guy. Can you beat this? Okay. Uh, or I can you at least match it, right? If the guy says, I can't beat it, I can match it, well, you know, that, gi that gives you a chance to make a decision. But honestly, you're going to make the decision to go with your favorite lender because there's a reason why they're your favorite lender. But that's that's the best way to get the best rate. Now, the reason why I'm saying this is because a lot of lenders can't help you unless they have a locked loan estimate because they have to go above their pay grade. Like I have to go to my regional manager or my secondary department uh, or whoever does pricing to see if there's any way I can get some wiggle room or whatever. Uh, and they won't do it without a locked loan estimate. And I'll tell you the reason why. Okay. And I'm telling you this, a lot of lenders might not tell you this. Uh, so I'm telling you this to be upfront with you. Okay. A lot of lenders might have wiggle room, but they ain't going to do shit unless they have a competitive pricing, <laughs> right? Like, just because you ask for a discount, I'm not going to just give it to you, right? I need to know what you want, right? What do I need to do to win your business now, right? And if you're telling me, if you beat this lock loan estimate, I will beat it. Then they will do the work to find out what they can do, okay? Otherwise, there's no point. And I'll tell you why. Because why would they give you their best just so you can go and, and go someplace else, okay? So again, what you're doing is you're kind of screwing the second lender, your second favorite letter, you're screwing them over, right? You're, you're giving them a chance though, so you can't he can't complain. So let's say it's Larry and Barry, right? And Larry's your favorite, and Barry's not your favorite, your second favorite, right? You go to Barry and get a lot more listen from Barry acting like, and you know, you will go with him if he's the better lender, a better price lender. You go to Barry, you ask for a lot of loans, Barry gives you a lot of loans, but you bring it to Larry, and Larry's like, I can beat this. Well, then obviously you're gonna go with Larry, right? But that's what you want to originally anyway, because Larry's your favorite lender. OK, and although you kind of screwed Barry over, you need to know that you can get the best rate because obviously you want to go with Larry, but you're not going to go with Larry if he's more expensive. So it's doing your due diligence and it's OK to do this because we're in the game uh, of, of, of winning business. So we understand if we lose because of rate. OK, well, I mean, some people, some people might not understand. I understand. OK, and that's OK, because I want what's best for you and your family. And if the rate is the most important thing for you. And if I don't have the best rate, I don't blame you for not using me. But I'm glad that I help you get the best rate. OK, a lot of lenders might not think that way, but I, I actually do. I am glad because I know that by doing that, I can possibly win your trust and I might be able to get a chance the second time around. Right. So that's kind of the point of me doing this is to build relationships. OK, so. You are screwing Barry over, but in reality, you're just doing what's best for your family, and there's no way to get the best rate without a comparison, okay? And again, my people, just like every other lender, won't give you the best unless they have something to fight 
against. And we'll be honest with you, we can't beat it. Like I'll actually, I've actually had people say, wow, that's a really great rate. We can't beat it. We can't match it. So there's nothing we can do with it. If they don't want to work with you based on that, then there's, then it is what it is. And I've actually had to tell people, hey, you know what? You got, you have the best rate. So if you want, you can go with them. I've actually had people still stick with me because of my honesty or they like me or I was cooler or whatever, better looking. I don't know why, but I've actually had people go with me because I was, even though I was a higher rate, but for the most part, if I give them the numbers and they leave, I don't get upset with it because I couldn't beat it, right? So uh, that's really uh, the best way to get the best interest rate. Now, there's even more strategy behind it, but it's way too much to get into this. And I kind of save that for like my like secret, secret, favorite, favorite coaching clients. Uh, so if you want more information on that, just let me know, okay? Uh, but I will put on here, especially you know, once rate is locked, you can't change. It only expires. It is why you lock a second favorite lender first. It's okay to tell a second favorite lender you're shopping. I think it's okay to tell them that. Okay, like uh, people tell me all the time, say, "Yeah, I'm actually shopping. So can you give me the best rate?" I'm, I'm uh, you know, and they're making me lock. Then I'm their second favorite lender. <laughs> I already know that, right? Like, yeah, I'm shopping you, Larry, and uh, I want to work with you, but uh, I need a lock on loan estimate from you in order to see if I can beat it. And, and if they're doing that, then I already know that I'm their second favorite lender. Okay, and that's okay because I have a chance. To me, that's that's worth more than nothing, right? All right, so. Uh, the next question, uh, and I call this a bonus question because not everyone asked this, but when they asked this, I'm like, okay, you, you don't, you don't, you don't have common sense. Okay. The question is, do you need a heart inquiry to qualify me? Yes. Yes. How am I supposed to know what you qualify for without having your information? That's like you asked me to do a math problem, but not giving me the variables, right? Like you give me a word problem, but you deleted some of the words. It, it doesn't, there's no way I can do anything. Okay. It is impossible to know what you credit without inquiry. Okay. And people tell me, oh, well, I got my credit scores. I got my credit scores from Trinity Union. I got my credit scores from, from, from uh, Credit Karma, whatever. It doesn't matter. They're not the ones qualifying you for a mortgage. Okay. I'm the one qualifying you for the mortgage. So my credit report is what counts. Okay. And, uh, you know, I said this in my video and I'm going to say it right now. It's like, it's like a drug test. Okay. Why would I allow you to bring a drug test that you took with someone else and a, a pee sample from outside to my drug test? I don't know that's your piss. Okay. You need a piss in my cup, right. For me to be able to find out whether or not you, you don't have any drugs uh, in your system. Okay. Same concept. Okay. I don't know what's, what, Whatever credit report you have, I don't know if you if you forged it or you changed it, or you have a friend that you know gave you some fake information. I need to look at the credit report from my perspective. Number one, because I need to know it's legit, and number two, I can't do anything. I can't send you to the automated underwriting system without having a credit report in my system. I'm I can't transfer your credit. I can't import your credit report into my system. It doesn't work that way. Okay, uh, so even if you did apply with another lender, I can't take that lender's credit report and put it into my system. It's just not how it works. Okay, so the 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 the, the issue with this question is that people are worried about inquiries. Okay, number one, if you're worried about inquiry, you, your credit probably sucks anyways. You probably shouldn't be applying for a mortgage if you're really that worried. Right now, the, I do have had exceptions where people have perfect credit and they don't want to inquiry, but they're just not informed that number one inquiry is necessary and number two the most that you're gonna lose is five points if you're worried about losing five points you don't qualify for a mortgage <laughs> right if you're worried that inquiry is going to disqualify you you don't qualify okay so let's get that out of, out of your mindset if you're thinking i don't want to inquiry because i don't want you to hurt my credit it's not gonna hurt your credit if it hurts your credit you don't qualify for a mortgage at all okay so let's just be real here okay um but uh, there's information on the credit report that's that 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 we need that's beyond the score. So your score is not enough information. Okay, I need to know what your liabilities are. I need to know what you have disputed. I need to know what your collections are. Uh, you know things like that, right? Um, and you know, on the end, I put the CFPB or Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. They actually protect you. So if you have your credit pulled by a lender within 45 days, another lender can look at it and it will still count in the same inquiry. It doesn't affect your scores. Okay, so you actually have someone pull your credit 45 times. And I'm talking about, let's say 45 days, you have a new lender pull it, 40, uh, you know, a new lender every single day pull it, so that's 45 times, it will still count as one inquiry, okay? They did that 
to allow you to shop. The reason why credit pulls are bad is because they don't want you to take out too many credit cards or buy you know too many cars or whatever. They know, well, actually cars might be a bad example. They know you're not going to buy five houses. Well, actually you might, who knows. But more, th more than likely you're not buying five houses. So they know that you're having your credit pulled by five different lenders because you're shopping for the best situation. You're not trying to buy five different houses. But if you apply for five different credit cards, you try to get five different credit cards and they don't like that. Okay, so there's a reason why scores go down and there's a reason why scores are protected. And in this case, scores are protected because they are encouraging you to have your credit looked at. Okay. Any questions thus far? I kind of went fast there a little bit. I was going to say, you can just um, input any questions on overall content or. You can ask me any questions, uh, but you know, I was actually asking questions uh, in general on what I just presented, the top 10 questions, whatever. Gotcha. No, no questions? Well, I think you covered most of it pretty well, honestly. It's one thing that a lot of people get really confused on is the, the credit um, inquiries and, and the interest rates. And those are two things you covered pretty in depth. Yeah. and. Uh, I'm going to kind of give an overarching uh, general uh, advice. The, the three things that you need to really worry about, you know, when people ask questions or what people are worried about is number one, what they can qualify for. That's really what they're thinking. You know, can I qualify for down payment assistance? Do, do I need, how much money do I need? What are my credit going to be? You know, do, and to answer that question, you just need to apply, right? What do I qualify for? What local, you just got to apply. Okay, so let, let, let's stop asking the stupid questions and just apply, and then you'll know. Clarity will, or the truth will set you free, okay? So so you need to apply, but you need to apply, of course, with a lender that cares enough to give you feedback, right? Because there are a lot of lenders that are gonna, you're going to apply with, and you don't you don't qualify, and they ghost you. They don't even answer your question. They send you a letter saying that you're denied or whatever. So obviously, that's bad, right? You want to talk to a lender that's willing to at least break down what's going on with your situation, and at the same time, guide you to the next step. For example, this is what I do. Right. If I pull someone's credit and their credit sucks, okay, uh, I'm gonna find out a way to get it to unsuck. Right. I'm gonna find out what they can do. We call it Wayfinder, where we actually go into the credit reporting system and we actually figure out what they can pay down and what they can do differently to get increase their scores. And if their scores can be increased uh, enough to qualify, uh, then I'm gonna of course let them know that. And then I'm gonna tell them I'm gonna give them like a, a it's called a credit plan. Uh, where we actually tell them what they need to do. And if they do it, we can actually do a rapid rescore, which actually will unnaturally in, uh, update the scores uh, with the credit bureaus. And therefore, we can get their scores up within, you know, a couple of weeks, maybe less, right? It all costs money, but I pay for that. Like, we don't charge the client for that, okay? Um, but that's something I do, right? Uh, so to me, the advice is you need to apply, but you need to apply with someone who cares enough to 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 give you information or feedback what you need to do. That way you know where you stand. Okay, uh, it's true you might apply and get nothing. Okay, sorry, but you just talked to the wrong loan officer. Okay, but in order to uh, you know answer you know I mean I'm gonna go to the to the ten question report. Okay, in order to answer the majority of these questions, you just need to apply. Right, what do I need to qualify? Do I need to be, yeah? What you need to be approved? Now I'll address that next. Um, but basically, a lot of this is covered by applying, okay, number one. Number two, the whole, like, inquiry thing, the whole, like, starting the process, the whole getting pre-approved thing. In this market, you're not going to get anywhere if you're not pre-approved, period, okay? So you just need to bite the bullet and get it done, right? You need to bite the bullet and get the get the letter that you need in order to make offers, okay? And how do you do that? You talk to a loan officer, okay? And no one has time for you to... Uh, try to figure out what you want to buy if you're not pre-approved, right? And uh, the worst thing that can happen is you get a contract and you're not pre-approved because now we're rushing, right? Number one. And number two, we don't even know if you qualify for the house that you, you made an offer on, right? I mean, that's like the worst thing you can do, okay? I compare it in my, my YouTube video, I compare it to like uh, buying shoes. You don't know what shoes to buy until you, you, you find out what size you need. Right. So you got to try on to find what size and then you know what shoe to buy. You know, I'm not going to look at a box and go, I want that shoe. I need to know if it fits or not. Right. That's what a pre-approval is. Pre-approval is to see if it actually fits your situation. OK, so um, it just it's just silly to go out and, and look at houses without being pre-approved. I mean, 
I don't know. I don't know why you would do that, <laughs> right? Except for the fact that you're you're skittish and you're worried about getting your credit pulled, whatever. And again, if you're worried about you getting your credit pulled, you don't qualify for a mortgage, <laughs> okay? If you if you're concerned that it's going to disqualify you, you're not ready. You're not ready to buy a house, okay? Um, so hopefully this information gets you ready, okay? Uh, and the third thing uh, that I want to address. Uh, in, in general, is the interest rate thing, right? Uh, I understand interest rates is, impo uh, is important, but in reality, it's not the most important thing you should be looking at, right? You need to actually be looking at APR, right? Because uh, I can give you the lowest interest rate, um, but I might be charging you a discount for that, right? A company that uh, is known for uh, space projection, whatever, right? <laughs> uh, but, but that company uh, has... Uh, given quotes where they give a really low rate, but then there's like a huge discount fee. Like they're actually paying a huge amount of money to get that rate. Okay. So you can't just look at the rate. You have to look at the APR, how much is actually costing you to get that rate. Okay. Uh, so that's why a loan estimate is so important because a loan estimate is designed to give you full disclosure. A lock loan estimate has to give you full disclosure. A lock loan estimate is official. This is the official quote. It cannot be changed. Right. So that is as real as it gets. There's no advertisement there. This is the actual contracted quote that they're asking you to sign. <laughs> right. They actually, you, you know, when it's a lock loan estimate. So that's how you know what your rate really is. And that's how much you know it costs. And, uh, you know, I, I know mom and dad and grandpa and uncle and neighbor all bought houses and they're giving me advice and you need to get the best interest rate, blah, 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 blah. They don't know what they're talking about. OK, they, they don't sell houses uh, uh, as, a, as a profession. They don't do mortgage as a profession. OK, they, they, they're only telling you what they think they know because their loan officer fed them that information. When the truth matter is, it's about APR, right? Uh, how much the actual loan costs you. So asking about interest rate is, is it's a loaded question that's going to lead you to nowhere, basically. OK, uh, but hopefully uh, you talk to the loan officer that's honest and they can give you some, some more information. OK, uh, so let's see here. I have a few questions here. If someone needs credit repair to improve their position, is this something you offer or you can refer them to? Tammy, um, so to answer that question, I don't do credit repair, but I will provide, like I said earlier, a credit plan. So let me explain that process to you. I pull the credit and it's it's now in the credit reporting system. The credit reporting system has a uh, sort of a service or software or option to do a wayfinder, how to get your scores up. Right. So they actually say, OK, you're right now at a 580. There's there's a possibility you can be at a 640. And this is how you do it. And they tell you what you need to do. Usually it's paying stuff down. So pay this five thousand dollar debt to like two thousand dollars. Pay pay this car from like uh, six hundred bucks to ten dollars. Right. It tells you that information and it's instructional what you need to do in order to get this score up. And then at the same time, get that score updated so that the new credit report has the new scores. I provide that, right? And again, that costs us money and time, whatever, but that's something I provide anyways because I want to make sure that my clients get all the information they need in order to make a, a good decision, right? especially if they're not quite ready yet, right? Because uh, nothing happens for me until they buy a house. I'm pretty sure you're in the same boat. Nothing happens for you until they buy a house, right? So it is in my best interest. For them to buy a house it is my goal it is my drive it is my passion it's literally what i wake up for to help them buy a house so if giving a credit plan is going to get them there then i do it uh with pleasure okay uh when it comes to a credit re repair i that's not my wheelhouse that's not what i do um but i do have people i can refer them to okay but i focus more on the credit plan if they need credit repair they're beyond my help and it's almost like I mean, I, I can't do anything beyond that. So th it's really subject to what they decide to do from that moment on. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Of course, mostly. I will say um, a, a quick summary, I guess, of my classes. The point of the first class is, again, uh, to address the question that people ask. Um, the reason why I call it honest answers is because I think it's a lot of the questions are stupid. Uh, and, you know, they say there's no stupid question. I don't think there's stupid. Like, how do I qualify for a mortgage? Well, you, you talk to a lender. That's That should be pretty common sense, right? Um, how do I know how much I can afford? Well, you can talk to a lender, <laughs> right? How, how do I know how much I can afford? How about I make offers on? Get pre-approved. That's how you know, right? 
you're asking me to just magically come up with a number in my head based on just talking to you online or talking to you on email or on a phone call. It's not going to happen. I need to get an application, right? Um, you know, like the whole, like, uh, you know, what's the best interest rate? What's the interest rate right now? 3%, 2.5%? I don't know, right? I can't really quote you because I don't know what your situation is, right? I've seen as low as two. Is that what you want to hear? I've seen as high as five. Is that what you want to hear? I don't, I don't know what, how to answer that question, right? Because I don't have enough information, right? Um, how to get the best interest rate? That's a, actually, I think that's a legit question though. How, how to get the best interest rate? That's, that's a legitimate question. And I don't think it's stupid. I think it's a fair question. And uh, hopefully I did my best to answer it, right? Um, Maria asks, uh, what other options other than a HELOC? It is a residential property. So HELOC to me tells me that you're looking to purchase, I mean, not, not purchase, you're looking to get cash, right? You want some sort of funds and you're drawing it from the equity of your home. That's what it's telling me, right? It's telling me that you're trying to have liquid and you're using your home as collateral or like the, 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 the source of that liquid. So if that's the case, there's uh, cash out uh, refinances. A cash out refinance basically looks at your home value and tells you how much they're able to uh, provide you in terms of equity uh, with certain stipulations in terms of like loan to value and such. And it also uh, considers how much you owe, right? You, you, you don't have to pay the current mortgage off. See, a lot of people don't realize a refinance is really just repurchasing your house. That's really what it is uh, when it comes down to it, okay? Like if I was to refinance my house, let's say I have a 30 year and I refinance it to a 15 year, right? What I'm really doing is I'm really, really, I'm really just rebuying my house. But instead of rebuying from a 30 year, uh, with a 30 year mortgage, I'm rebuying it with a 15 year mortgage. So of course a higher mortgage payment, but I have equity. Right, and the equity is mine, so I'm using it as sort of a down payment, right? So uh, it's really a whole new loan, okay? So I have to pay off the old loan first. So of course the old loan need, they need to get paid first. So let's call it uh, uh, mortgage A and mortgage B, right? Mortgage A needs to be paid off before mortgage B can exist. So you uh, whatever equity you have. You, you got to pay mortgage A off, and then the rest of it you get to keep however you want it, right? That's what a refinance ultimately is, okay? Cash out is the same thing, but now you're getting cash back from the house, right? Um, yes, so yeah, uh, cash out refinance is an option, uh, and uh, I don't know if you've spoken to a lender before, Maria. I don't know if, if you've worked with someone in that capacity, but that's uh, that's a pretty typical pro uh uh, product. It's a pretty typical service that lenders would provide you. Um, but yeah, that's, I mean, that that's another option is the, uh, is the cash out refinance. Now you can also do reverse mortgages. Again, another product I'm not super versed on, but reverse mortgages, uh, they are, uh, set up to give you basically money on a monthly basis. But really what you do is you're, you're basically selling your house. You're, you're, you're giving your house up, right? So a reverse mortgage is kind of like, I'm going to sell my house back to the bank or selling to the bank, right? And the bank's going to give me my payments that they owe me for the house in the monthly payment type of situation, right? Uh, so that's why it's called reverse mortgage. It's a little bit different. Uh, I'm not well versed on it, uh, but it's a way to get monthly income, not really liquid, but monthly income pay back to you. But basically, you're just kind of diluting or dissolving the equity that you've already accumulated. That's why, you know, for the most part, it's for people who are older, who have the house paid off, yada, 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 right? Uh, so hopefully that makes sense. But yeah, a cash out refinance is probably the best way. HELOCs are great. Um, usually, they have a higher rate because it's, it is it is like a line of credit. Usually, they're a higher rate than a cash out. But the great thing about a HELOC is you can always reuse it. So you 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 get your your money to to do whatever you want with it and you spend it but then you pay it back you can reuse it again 
that's kind of a cool thing, right? With the cash out, uh, that's just cash that you took out, and you're just you're you're paying it back based on your mortgage. Uh, and of course, you can always pay more towards the principal on your mortgage payments to quote quote uh, you know pay off your mortgage faster. But it's not like a it's not like a reusable fund. You know, once you spend it, it's spent, right? Uh, whereas a HELOC, you can constantly use it over and over like a credit card. Right? So that's why HELOCs are cool. But again, it's a higher rate, right? Uh, what are the rates? Again, don't ask me that question. We have to look at what to find out. <laughs> All right. So any other questions? Uh, I see. I still see there are a few participants here. No problem. If you have any questions, let me know. I think my information should be uh, in my channel. I think if you found me on my YouTube channel, yeah, uh, my information should be in my channel. Yeah. So if, if, if not, then just Google me, Larry Lee. Uh, I'm in Frisco, Texas or Dallas, Texas. You should be able to find my information there. I appreciate Boss Lee. Thank you. Uh, I think that's it. There's no one else asking questions uh, in the panelists. Well, actually, you know what? You know what? There is. Crap. Michael uh, is talking about the purchase agreement with the uh, buyer being approved for loan. He says it built in the purchase agreement in the real instance, it depends. I don't know if he's talking about that. Uh, if he is, then I wouldn't know what it depends on. Joyce says, very good and great information. Thank you. Thank you, Joyce. I appreciate it. Michael says, audio is still working. That's good. Uh, Shelly asks, will you send a copy of us to share with our clients? I wouldn't mind even posting it on my business page. I will... Uh, I will share the slides with everybody who wants it. Uh, actually, I'll just email it to you guys because I think I have like a, a mass email list. I'll share the slides to everybody. I don't mind if you share it. Uh, and uh, the replay uh, is going to be everywhere, but I also share a link to the replay as well. I think I stream it to like YouTube and Facebook and LinkedIn. Uh, yeah, you can share it to anybody. I don't care. Um, and yeah, if, if, if you have any questions, if they have questions, I'll be glad to to answer them but yeah please i mean I, I would be honored if you share my information with everyone i really appreciate uh really appreciate brad brad's a great info she likes a great info all right so it's two o'clock let's call this a two-hour call <laughs> and we'll end it and hopefully my next call is a little bit faster more efficient as you can see it's not 100 percent polished. i still had i still had a few typos and uh you know i want to make it a smooth transition maybe i can condense the first two classes together um and hopefully I gave as honest uh, and transparent information as possible. Hopefully you got what you were ho hoping to get on this call. And of course, most of more, hopefully you learned something. Uh, either way, I really appreciate you guys being here. This is Larry, the Mortgage Guy, your mortgage insider and certified veteran mortgage advisor. I really appreciate it. You're, I'm out. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, please do us a favor and hit the like button below. That way we tell the YouTube algorithms that people like yourself should be watching this video. And if you do want to see future videos, please consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell. That way when we create new content, you'll be the first to know. Also, you can probably see related videos to this video over here, somewhere in the screen that you can click or somewhere in the comments. Either way, we appreciate you guys watching. This is Larry, the Mortgage Guy, your mortgage insider. I'll see you in the next video.